Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm your host and moderator, Sherelle Roberts, and I'm joined by the Let's Talk team. It's Susan Mills, Kim Dixon, and Lisa. Hi. Hey, hey y'all. everybody. Hi. Hey. Hey. Welcome. Hey. And Thank today, you. we are joined by Brittany Rothmeyer from the Fade Alliance. Welcome, Brittany. Thank you so much for having me. Such a pleasure. Yeah, we are glad to have you here. You are a top of the show guest, which is like never happened. <laughs> but you are the talk of the town today. We like to be in every show with talk of the town, and she's here to talk about the urban service boundary. Now, on our show, we have a lot of fun, but we get very serious about giving you all viewpoints. So we've had people on the show who have talked about the pros of expanding the urban service boundary. Brittany is here to give another viewpoint in today's talk of the town. So first of all, tell us a little bit about who you're representing, the Fate Alliance. Sure. Well, thanks again for having me. Uh, the Fate Alliance is a nonprofit that's dedicated to smart, equitable, and sustainable growth here in Lexington Fayette County, and we do that work through advocacy, education, and research. We advocate at City Hall, we educate our community through free programming, and we fund independent research studies to guide smart growth here in Fayette County. Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. So tell us a little bit about, a little bit more about your mission, um, who you reach, who your target audience is. Sure, absolutely. So we were founded in 2006 with the idea that we hope that all community members can be at the table when we talk about growth and development. And our vision really is that there is such a connection between the farmland and the landscape that surrounds this community and our vibrant city. And so in our view, those two things working together is how Lexington can continue to be successful. Mm -hmm. Okay, so about this urban service boundary. So what is the Fade Alliance's view on the urban service boundary being expanded in light of the Fade Alliance's views and mission? Absolutely. So this week that that decision is up up for a vote, of course, and our position really is that there should be a process, a data-driven and objective process to evaluate when, where, how much the urban services boundary should be expanded should be expanded in the future. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. So there are folks on the other side of it that say there's plenty of data. They've been at it a long time. It's been like 20 years. Let's do it already. Um, and they said that it'll bring down um, housing costs potentially and that it may help with traffic. So how do you balance that with the considerations that you all have as well? That's a great question. And there's so many, I think, pieces of this discussion. Uh, Beta Alliance is certainly aware that housing prices are through the roof. We're displacing people in our community. People are struggling to find um, both affordable housing and frankly housing affordability is suffering as a result. Um, so the question is all about solutions and what does research show about what those solutions should be. Um, the Lexian Board of Realtors actually commissioned a study from the University of Kentucky economist to ask this exact question. Will expansion make housing more affordable? And what they found, and this is where our position comes from, being based in research, the University of Kentucky Kentucky economists found that expansion of the urban services boundary would not make housing prices more affordable, would not, for in the long term, impact the cost of housing. Um, and as a result, I think we really have to reevaluate what the expansion of the urban services boundary is going to do for this community. Mm -hmm. That same study also found that expansion of the urban services boundary would not be a benefit to the community because of the expansion of the cost of services, police fire, education, roads, mm. sewer, all of these are such an expense to the community that all of these factors have to be considered, which is why we're requesting and continue to call for and point to research to call for a process to guide our growth decisions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Brittany, thank you so much for being on. Like we said, we wanted to have both sides of this argument be laid out, so we really appreciate you coming on. And everybody, thank you so much. Thank you. Everybody for, for having stay me. with us. Coming up after the break, some men are leaving America completely to find more traditional women to date and marry. Let's talk about it. You deserve to say yes. These are my results. I am so happy. Yes to confidence. I'm so happy I just put this dress on that I haven't worn in over 10 years. Yes to a new shape. Look what someone did for me. 
Do you, do you see, do you see this? Yes, to a new you. I'm Dr. Elena Vega. Imagine you could remove this much fat from multiple areas all at one time. Sono Bellows board certified surgeons use micro laser technology to safely target and remove your diet resistant fat cells for good. I have the flattest tummy that I've had in 25 years. I'm able to wear things that I never thought I would wear again. I can wear a little black dress. I feel sexy. Schedule your free, no obligation consultation and find out how you can get $250 off instantly. Call 1-888-273-9096 or go to sonobello.com. Hi, this is Joseph with Rapid Fire Home Buyers. Do you have a house that's costing you too much time and money? Maybe a rental house, an inherited house you don't know what to do with, or the house you're living in that you just can't keep up with. We buy property in any condition and any price range all over the Southeast. Sell your house as is for cash with no repairs, no fees, and no commissions. If you're even thinking of selling your house, before you call a realtor, give us a call for a free cash offer. Call 859-695-3875. My name is Diana Hawk, and I'm an operations manager at Morgan & Morgan. At Morgan & Morgan, we've made it really easy. Anything that we need from you, you're able to do from the comfort of your home. You can just dial pound law, and you talk to someone like me. 163 is your favorite station. Be sure to check out Mandy and Shayna in the afternoon each and every day from 2 to 6. Tune in for second day update, tell me something good, tons of giveaways, and much more. And if we can't entertain you, we are sure the music will with throwbacks and fresh hits. All your hits, 106.3. Welcome back to Let's Talk Kentucky. I'm your host and moderator, Sherelle Roberts, and we are back with the Let's Talk team. It is time, y'all, for the countdown convo. All right, let's Woo. do it. Kim, look at these glasses. You look cute. <laughs> so studious. <laughs> wow. What's going on here? <laughs> love it. I love that. that actually, <laughs> I think you have them sometimes and you sneak them on and off, but I think the dress is just... It's, it's popping, it's yes, popping, it popping. Sassy. We love all yes. of this. <laughs> all right, that was not a part of the countdown combo, but I just looked over and I said, oh, come on, glasses. Okay. So anyways, this is the part of the show where we try to talk about as many topics as we can in six minutes. Sometimes we make it, sometimes we don't. So let's see what happens today. Okay, up first, passport bros. So there are a bunch of dudes, and when I say a bunch, I mean enough to get attention on social media. They are travel vloggers, but they are also vlogger dater traveler vloggers. And so they go around the world looking for women to date. And they've started saying that women outside of America are better to date because they're more traditional, they're more submissive, and they are saying that other men should ditch American women, get a passport, and get out there in the world and go find them a woman who doesn't act like us crazy American women. All right. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm. This is crap, okay? <laughs> this is crap. This is just a modernized form of mail-order brides, okay? I used to work in a bar, and guys would come up to me and, hey, what are you doing tonight? Hey, you're cute. And I would just say, hi, I'm at work, um, thanks. And they'd be like, you speak English. Oh. I didn't, oh, I didn't know you'd speak English. Or, your last name's Dixon. Are you married? No. You're half white. You got an Asian mom. No. You know, that's, that kind of thing happened yeah. all the time. They were expecting something else out of me. They were expecting submissive and uh, obedient. Mm -hmm. And by saying things with an American accent, they were completely disinterested because they knew I was an American woman. Oh, ah, well, wait a minute. They're lost. They're lost, Kim. Uh, yeah. uh -huh. You know what I say? I say, good riddance. The bad rubbish. <laughs> Go have them. We oh, don't my. care. You know? I mean, we honestly. Don't we, yeah. yeah, we, we don't. don't. It, they're weeding out the process for us. Yep. That's how I'm looking at this. Uh, okay. Amen on that, Lisa. And you know what? I think these, these guys are a little bit maybe misguided. Here's, here's my point. So one of the guys said, uh, you know what, like the women just think that we're exotic over here. <laughs> so maybe they didn't have too much luck here. <laughs> maybe the women just didn't want them here, mm -hmm. which may be accurate. Good possibility. So, they traveled overseas. <laughs> exactly. These are what we call the dusties. You know, just, dust. bye just bye. over in the corner hanging out. They, they can't <laughs> handle American women. They can't handle, you know, the je ne sais quoi, the flavor, the spice that we bring. That's so right. I get That's it. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, Godspeed to you. All right, up next. <laughs> Self, no, up next, excuse me, plastic surgery. So, 
America has this really paradoxical relationship with plastic surgery. If a woman doesn't look her best, we say, mm, she should get a little work done. Mm -hmm. And then if a woman gets work done, we say, girl, did you hear that? She got plastic surgery. It's like this whole thing. It's We can never be happy for people or we always have something to say. Why are we this way when it comes to when it comes to this, and it's not just women. So one of my friends on Facebook, he says, he's, he writes a post. He says, everywhere I look, there's women with Brazilian butt lifts. And then the guys in the comment section was like, mm, I know it's a shame, it's a shame, it's a shame. And I thought, now wait a minute, these same men that are talking about it's a shame are the same ones that break their necks looking at a big booty. <laughs> but you're mad because somebody got a Brazilian butt lift. Like, what are we doing? You know what, the guys, the guys can be judgmental, but I'm telling you, I think the women could can be worse yeah. than the men. Mm -hmm. um, I just I there's this whole like mixed feeling thing. It's like you know what, just be yourself, be happy, mm. do whatever you do makes you happy. But when a woman does or mm -hmm. man, mm -hmm. then someone's going to be judgmental mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. Very true. true. That is true. So, I mm -hmm. you know I I just say more power to you if you if you want the Brazilian butt lift or whatever it is <laughs> or breast implants or facelift, whatever, if, if you've got the money to do it, you, you know, it's, it's your call. You know, make yourself happy, you know? Exactly. And don't worry about other people, what they're yeah. going to say, because everybody's going to have a comment, so you might as well be ready. For exactly. Everyone's got an opinion. I've thought about getting Botox before, right here, where I've got the angry, you know, the frowny face. Mm -hmm. I have a friend who did that, and she had to, the whole time she was at the appointment, she had to keep telling them, no, I don't want this. They kept trying to upsell her. Mm. Oh. You want to do this, you want to do this. So I think it can get a little pushy sometimes mm -hmm. in there, too, mm -hmm. and you've got to be strong and say, I want what I want, and nothing more. Yeah, mm. yeah, because yeah. some people go way... That's a great way point. off the mark, you know, as far yeah. as how much they get done, too. Mm -hmm. So you got to be careful. Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's plastic surgery. And then finally, robot cars. So there are autonomous cars doing all kinds of things, driving around. There are some Teslas now that can drive you while you're in the car. Then there are some cars that are unmanned. But we've seen accidents with these cars, dogs being run over, people being hit. And it raises the question, are we ready? Like, our, our, our elected officials have not passed laws to govern these things. And so it, it's like the Wild West of unmanned cars out there, guys. It is. <laughs> well, you know, the, the cool thing is, is that these autonomous cars can make precise calculations that humans may not be able to make. Mm -hmm. But humans can make actual judgments. Mm. Like, is it a human passing in front of the car mm -hmm. that needs to make a last minute decision where uh, there have been instances where the autonomous car couldn't? I, I believe there needs to be a regulatory agency mm -hmm. over. There are lo so far, the companies have been the ones programming the robots that essentially run the cars. Mm -hmm. There's no regulations on this. There needs to be one agency, just like we have a lot of agencies, the FDA, like for airplanes, we need to have one agency that controls this. Yeah. Well, I am unlike Kent Brockman from The Simpsons, and I do fear our robot overlords. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not about this. No, no, no. It, scare it scares me. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it scares me too. And not only the robotic part of the car scares me, but the satellite connection mm -hmm. to the car scares me. I mean, I can't even get a satellite connection with my phone, a cell phone connection. I can't even get that in Eastern Kentucky. Mm -hmm. So how are we going to be able to program cars mm -hmm. to be able to drive by themselves? Can't do it. <laughs> the Tough questions. Get on it, lawmakers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get on it. Yeah. Okay, so everybody stay with us. Coming up after the break, Stacey Shepard, former UK women's basketball player and mom of incoming UK men's basketball freshman, Reed Shepard, joins us at the table. Spilling the ET Father's Day edition. New kid on the block, Joey McIntyre, gets grilled by his two sons. <laughs> you are grounded. Next, E.T. E Tonight at 7 on ABC 36. Watch me. Watch me grapple, move, and pin. When I hit the mat, don't underestimate the grin. I've got state championships and medals to show, but it's about more than just winning. This you should know. Overcoming odds through therapy and care. The road was long. Now opponents beware. Watch me. Game-changing sports medicine at Shriners Children's. The most amazing care anywhere. My tip is the worst lies are the lies you tell yourself. Like smoking isn't that dangerous. You can quit. 
for free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. At Rally's, I'm in the driver's seat. Give me that $5 meal deal with a Rally burger. Better yet, make it a mushroom Swiss burger with that mmm mushroom sauce. With eight-piece white meat chicken bites, Rally's famous seasoned fries, and a drink for just five bucks. Yeah, all that. Can I get a mushroom? My $5 meal deal with a mushroom Swiss burger. Whatever you order, own it at Rally's. Get your late night flavor fix. When severe weather strikes, the ABC 36 storm team has you covered. Protecting you from severe weather without the hype. First, fast, accurate. And we know Kentucky. The ABC 36 storm team on your side. She started talking. Judge Steve Harvey returns Wednesday, 8, 7 central on ABC. Let's Talk Kentucky is brought to you by Critchfield Meats. Welcome back to the show, everybody. The Let's Talk team is here, and we are joined at the table by Stacy Shepard, former UK basketball player and mom to incoming freshman Reed Shepard. Hey, Stacy. Hello, Stacy. Welcome to the table. Thank we are so glad, glad to, to have you. So you are definitely a known name. You are you are a former UK basketball player. You are a mom. You are, I'm sure, in your hometown because you said you're down in London, right? Yeah, I'm sure everybody knows you down there. So, but there's always things that we know about ourselves that folks don't know. So tell us a little bit about yourself and something that people might not know. Well, I've, I was born and raised in London, Kentucky. I've always lived there and um, just blessed to be there with family and friends. Um, but a lot of things, or some things that people don't know is I grew up playing basketball with my dad. Mm. And um, we, he would always play in men's league and that's where I would always go. So I got beat up and uh, played outside with chain nets and uh, it's where I really learned the game from. So I'm very fortunate for all that, that he taught me and what I learned from being with him. Um, but also, I always said when I was playing basketball that I didn't always want to be known as just Stacy Reed, the basketball player, Stacy Shepard now. And so as I got to college and I started dating Jeff, I no longer became Stacy Reed, the basketball player. I became Stacy Reed, Jeff's girlfriend. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then I was the wife. Uh -huh. um, and now I'm Reed Shepard's mom uh -huh. uh, and Madison Shepard's mom. So, you know, you got to be careful what you ask for. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. So the word on the street uh, in Kentucky is that your son Reed is going to be a freshman playing at UK this year. So tell us he about is. that. I'm um, so excited. We are excited. Uh, it's been a lot of adjustment. Um, high school ended in March. He played in a tournament in Italy. Um, Mr. Kentucky basketball. So there's been a lot going on. We moved him in on the 31st. Um, our daughter got married on the 13th of May, and so it's been it's been a whirlwind of life adjustments, and we're just trying yeah. to figure it all out. Well, yeah. we're glad we're glad you're going through it. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Okay, so you and your husband Jeff played for UK. What advice are you giving to Reed about this season coming up? Um, the biggest thing is just to be himself, just mm -hmm. to remain humble um, and kind and treat everybody with respect and how you want to be, be treated. Um, because as you all know in media, um, you have a lot of people that really shoot you up high on the totem pole and then mm -hmm. immediately are chopping at the roots to tear you down. Um, but keep his circle really tight mm -hmm. and really close and trust the opinion of people that he trusts mm -hmm. um, and try not to let all the social media warriors with the darts and the bullets and everything flying to really get him down because there's going to be highs and lows as you all know and yeah, in everything yeah. that you do and some things are good and some things are bad but to try to stay on an even keel and be true to who, he's, who he is mm -hmm. um, and yeah. just be humble and respectful. That's great advice. I love really, it. Really, really That's is. awesome. Well, since you and Jeff both obviously were big ball players at UK, how much of an influence did you have on your children? Because your daughter played ball too and was very right. good. So um, let's give a shout out to her. But what kind of influence did you guys have on them playing ball as well? 
Well, it's interesting because, you know, we have a lot of Kentucky artifacts in our house, pictures and stuff, and Jeff and I made a decision before we had kids that we were not going to hang any of those things up in our house because we didn't want them growing up seeing that, expect, you know, thinking that that's what they had to be or to be a certain way or to go to a certain school. And we allowed our kids to, to play all sports, and um, they both chose basketball. Um, you know, Reed played soccer, football, baseball, uh, basketball, and Madison played soccer and also basketball. But, you know, we wanted them to find their own identity in their own sport that they were comfortable with. And they, they both chose basketball, which we're happy about. I know <laughs> nothing about cheerleading, so I was so <laughs> happy um, that Madison didn't go that route. But, um, you know, they that's the route that they chose, and they walked through the door that the Lord had opened. And, you know, they've Madison did great at Campbellsville, and we're expecting the same thing with Reed at Kentucky. Yeah. Right. Well, Gosh. So you have both kids out of the house now. That means you're an empty nester. What's yes. that been like? It's hard. Uh, I give kudos to parents that go through that every year, uh, all the time. And I, you know that progressive commercial where you turn into your parents? Uh, that's kind of how I feel now when I hear my kids are coming over. I'm like, oh, come back any time. When you got longer to stay, I was like, oh my gosh, that's my mom. Um, but it, it's such a special time, you know, because they're not there and you don't get to hear their stories and how their day has gone every day. So when you do have that time, you really cherish it and uh, look forward to it. And I'm not much of a cooker, but I, I'm glad to cook dinner when they come Aww. home. Aww. I love that. That's great. Well, yeah. Stacy, thank you so much for sharing with us. It was great to get to know you better and we're well, looking forward to cheer and read on. Well, thank yes, you. I appreciate it. All right, everybody, stay <laughs> with us. Coming up after the break, a TV legend is saying goodbye and viewers are not happy. Why sell your car at WeBuyAnyCar.com? Because selling it yourself can be, well, you know. So how many bodies does this car hold? Well, it's a five-passenger car. Right. Passengers. Yeah. Maybe even six. Avoid strange encounters. Come to WeBuyAnyCar.com instead. It's easy. You get in, get out, and get paid at a fair price. cha -ching. Get your free online valuation now at WeBuyAnyCar.com. Confused by all the Camp Lejeune toxic water commercials? Let me answer some of your questions. Are claims filed against the U.S. Marine Corps? No. The U.S. government has set aside billions of dollars for those who have suffered. The Marine Corps will not be impacted. Will a Camp Lejeune claim affect my VA benefits? No. According to the VA, your right to VA benefits will remain intact. If you have questions about a Camp Lejeune claim, call the Driscoll firm now for a free consultation. 1-800-263-4200. See what you can discover at the last genuine leather company. Hi, this is Joseph with Rapid Fire Home Buyers. Do you have a house that's costing you too much time and money? Maybe a rental house, an inherited house you don't know what to do with, or the house you're living in that you just can't keep up with. We buy property in any condition and any price range all over the Southeast. Sell your house as is for cash with no repairs, no fees, and no commissions. If you're even thinking of selling your house, before you call a realtor, give us a call for a free cash offer. Call 859-695-3875. Hey y'all, welcome back to Let's Talk Kentucky. It is time for What in the World is Trending? And this one is about the end of an era. Pat Sajak, Wheel of Fortune Pat Sajak, is retiring from Wheel of Fortune. 
Boy, he's been at it for a minute, so long that it, back in 2019, the Guinness World Records recognized him for having the longest career as a game show host for hosting the same show. So Wheel of Fortune, which we all know you get to spin the little wheel and you, hopefully you can guess the puzzle, is the country's longest running syndicated game show and it's taped more than 7,000 episodes. Wow. Sajak's wow. co-host, Vanna White, has been on the show nearly as long. She came on back in 1982. So she's not leaving, but Pat is out of there. That's so sad. Aww. It really is. It's like him, Bob Barker, like we yeah. just. Alex so Trebek, my childhood I is know. ruined now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. It really is. I, you know. know, I know because I watched, especially Wheel of Fortune, I watched this with my mom growing up yeah. and it was like, we wanted to do the mother-daughter tournament too. <gasps> and we just, we never did get to do it. And I'm just like, oh, I wish we would have because she was really good at guessing the puzzles. And uh, you know, I would have just rode her coattails through Aww. the whole thing, but yeah, she I was. Had, she was really good with it. Wheel of Fortune was the hardest for me. I did well with Jeopardy, but I could never figure out the puzzles, even when most of the letters were there. Uh -huh. And it was so frustrating, but it's Pat Sajak that, and Vanna that made it interesting, yeah. you know? Yeah. It's so yeah. much fun, so I'd watch it anyway, even though I never knew what was going on. Uh -huh. It's still fun, and in yeah. an era... I know. Yeah. It was intergenerational in our house. Mm -hmm. and we watched, it was me, my brother, mom and dad, and grandma. And so after dinner, it was a time that we all had together. Oh. But I would get so mad as a kid because people would shout out half of the answer and I was like, no, we need a rule. <laughs> you don't say it until you know the whole thing. And so, yes. Oh. <laughs> Let's see how long Vanna White stayed. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I know her daughter had like a little sub, like stint, yeah. like yeah. there. And she looks obviously just like Vanna. But I wonder if uh, if Vanna's going to be on his oh, coattails. Man. I almost feel like they need to leave together. I do too. I do. They're a package, I right? Know. They're a package yeah. deal. Look, don't, mess with <laughs> don't mess with Vanna's coins. Let Vanna get these little bit of coins. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, everybody. Well, we we like to end every show with a woman we're talking about, and today's woman we're talking about is Antoinette Johnson. The Lexington native is a social media influencer, business owner, and the most recent winner of America's Test Kitchen. John Johnson is all about accessible recipes with Southern inspiration. She likes to cut down on cook time while mm -hmm. still achieving delicious results. That's my kind of cooking. <laughs> with her one hour burnt ends, just as an example, she likes to find new ways to make classic dishes such as scallops with spinach, with bacon blanc, or broiled carne asada with charred, charred red onions. And she's my sorority sister. She's a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Antoinette Johnson, you are a a woman worth talking about. Congratulations! Right. I have to yeah. check out the one-hour burnt ends. Yeah, uh, I know. Ends. Let me call her. Can you get us a one-hour burnt end? Hello. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, y'all, we want to hear about your woman we're talking about. Head over to WTVQ, click on the Let's Talk Kentucky cab, and then click the little link that says nominate a woman we're talking about. Yep. Yeah. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. We had so much fun with you today. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye, everyone. <laughs>